State in Mankato. We are going to today talk about, we can open it up to whatever, but we're going to start with play action pass and some concepts that we utilize uh, mostly off our inside zone. We'll touch a little bit about off of our, our power game. We didn't do a lot of it this past season. And then we'll touch a little bit about some of the play action we do off of the jet stuff that Coach was talking about earlier. Just a couple things to, to add on to what Coach said earlier, that was some, some fantastic stuff, is two years ago we started utilizing the one-word plays with our offense. And we married it up with left hash, right hash, um, with team names and team mascots. For instance, we would have a left hash play in Texas, the right hash would be Longhorns. We would just flip the play. Um, what it allowed our kids to do as we carry about 24 of them, you know, total, so 48 different plays if you count left hash and right hash. Um, the thing about it is, is we use them out of the same, we have about 12 that are 12 personnel and 12 of them are 11 personnel. You know, how many times you're yelling out the one play like, shit, I got 12 personnel, <laughs> it's supposed to be 11, that kind of stuff. But a lot of our kids, you know, to, we use all team names, right? We got Texas Longhorns, San Francisco 49ers, New England Patriots, stuff that marries up with teams, okay? Um, our run plays are college teams, our pass plays are professional teams, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, talking about play action pass protections and concepts, uh, we started out and it, it, we build on it throughout the season because you, you have an idea when you walk in but you never really know who you're going to be, okay? Well, what are our most productive run schemes? For us, this last season, it was inside zone, um, a little bit of power, and some of the power read the jet stuff. Before, it's been, you know, power was our top one, so power pass, you know, whether it was naked off power, power or, or waggle off power. Um, but what are our most productive run schemes? And then how can we marry up a pass play and the concept off of that? Who are we trying to affect? When we look at our play action pass, who are we trying to affect? Is it a safety? Is it the play side safety? Is it a backside safety who is really concentrating on getting downhill and, and being the cutback player on the inside zone? Is it an alley player for perhaps a power pass or a waggle off of it? What is that person that we're trying to affect keen, right? If it's a front side safety and he's the D-gap defender, if he's a D-gap defender um, in the run game, how are we going to affect him? What is he looking at? Is he looking at the tight end? Is he looking at the tackle? Is he keying the backs, you know, the back flow? All those types of things. And what we talk with our offensive line, our quarterbacks, and our running backs. It's got to look, sound, smell, feel, taste. Every sense we have, common sense is a big one for us, like the run. It's got to look like the run. How can we make it look like the run as much as possible, okay? And the other thing is with a lot of our stuff, we try to make the protection marry up as closely as we can with the run game so our offensive linemen can play fast. We talk about making it as easy as we can for our five guys up front so they can play as fast as they can and, and not think. We want to give our players the least amount of information possible to be successful. Give our kids the least amount of information possible to be success, to, to have success. Uh, coach Meyercord, who used to uh, coach up at uh, uh, Point, no, was he Point? No, he was at uh, Stout, right? At Stout, we're talking about, listen, if you're thinking, you're stinking. Clear minds equal fast legs. And he's right, we want to let those kids play fast, okay? So we, we're going to start out with our inside zone, and then the concept, the basically two base concepts that we run off our inside zone, which are pocket concepts, okay? We can get into some of the boot stuff that we do off of our inside zone in a second. But we're running inside zone, we're running out of 12 personnel, we're running out of 11 personnel, we're running out of 10 personnel. Here we are, we're running out of uh, 12 personnel, and it's just split zone, guys. On our inside zone concept, on the front side, we want to reach, run, okay? We tell our offensive lineman, we want to reach the guy in your gap. If you get him reached, press him vertical. If you cannot get him reached, we want you to turn and run him as wide as you can. Reach to run. You got three steps to figure it out, guys. First step, second step, third step. If I don't have him reached, covered up with my hat, covering his play side here, then I want to get my hand on his hip and I want to run him. Because now we're not going to get vertical movement. We want to make sure that we get horizontal movement to make the gaps that much bigger for those backers, safeties, whoever it might be, to fill. On the back side of our inside zone, we talk front side, we talk back side. So front side, the center play side, 
Backside is center, backside. On the backside of our inside zone, we are full reach to cutoff. We're full reach to cutoff. Our philosophy on inside zone is what we're trying to do is get multiple defenders in a gap. Right? We want to get two of their guys in a gap. How we do that is based on either A, getting them reach and cutoff, or we're splitting the zone with the swiper, the fullback, whoever it might be coming across. And if we're talking zone read, now we're splitting the zone by reading the defender. Okay? But here we are, we're just running a base split zone. Our, our swiper, the guy who's coming back across, is kicking out the first man outside our end man. This is a terrible job by our play side receiver down here to the right. We've got formation in the boundary. He needs to push crack that safety. Because we want to make corners make tackles. They're corners for a reason. I don't want to tackle because I can't play safety. Here we're on the same thing. Now this is one of our buzzword plays where we came out and you can see the defense kind of getting lined up later. Our quarterback, this is the first game of the year, and our quarterback didn't do a great job of trusting the other 10 guys. See how he comes up there and says something to the offensive line? You got to trust that the guys understand what they're doing. So when we're just running the same football player, we're on a split zone, our swiper comes back across and kicks out the first man outside our in man. And then what we do is, once we've handed it off, we run so much zone read that instead of booting away, our quarterback attacks it downhill. That's his fake on that, not boot. Coach, what's your back's aiming point on inside zone? Our back's aiming point on inside zone is the play side of the, of the guard, of the play side guard. Outside leg, excuse me. Play side guard, outside leg of the play side guard. When we run zone from the from the uh, the gun when we're offset, aiming points right here. So we really want to press it, press it, and then get downhill. I tell the running back and the same, you guys tell them the same thing. We're not going to make a cut until we get to the heels of the offensive line. Not to where the offensive line is lined up initially, but where they're lined up. Because you know we're counting on them getting moving. Okay? When we're in the dot or the pistol. We take our outside, our inside zone backside. Okay, so we really talk with that quarterback. If we're running pistol zone, you know, and we're running it to the left here, when that quarterback catches that ball, we're going to open our foot and drop to give that running back a really tight track, so he can still get to the play side or the outside leg of the play side guard. You know, if the quarterback just catches it and turns like this, well, now we're never going to get to the aiming point. And that play side backer and that backside backer, they're going to mirror step, mirror step, and then rock back and make the play if we're trying to bend it back. You change for the depth of your quarterback, whether it's a guard or pistol? We do. We try to get him at heels at five when we're in the gun and heels at four when we're in the pistol. And we go round and round about it. Because when you start running inside, you up the eye formation, right? Or when we're under center. The tailback heels were always at eight, right? Well, now we're in the gun. You know, and you'll see some teams, I think, uh, I don't know what they'll do now, but Oregon, they used to have that tailback slightly offset, and he was a lot deep. They're basically running inside tail that take back and take the crossover step and go. You know, my thought is we're five, we're in the gun, okay? And we're about not quite three yards, so we're still at eight, so the timing's still, it isn't ideal, but the timing's still there, okay? When we're in the pistol, you know, our heels are at four, we'll have that back at six and a half, seven yards. <clears throat> so here we are again, put formation in the boundary, and same thing, it's split zone, and the safety's downhill. Now there's no, he's not gonna go to the front side safety, the receiver down here in the bottom. He's looking, you can see him peek. He knows he's not gonna get there, all right, go block the corner. Really great job by our backside receiver. We talk a lot. Our receivers coach, Coach Olson, does a great job of getting those receivers to buy in, to sell out for each other on every single play. Not a great job by Virgil. You got to score that. Virgil is a senior running back from Oak Creek. <laughs> 